2022 has essentially been one nonstop advertisement for Bitcoin. Started out with uh, the censorship of donations to a particular cause in the case of the Canadian trucker convoy earlier in the year. Uh, later on, Russia realizes that their accumulated trade surplus in the form of uh, foreign fiat reserves can basically be turned off. Ukraine accepting Bitcoin as donations uh, to fuel their efforts there. We have seen some truly extraordinary events. And one thing is clear, Bitcoin's censorship resistant properties are on display for the world to see. And that is why in today's video, I want to explore BTC Pay Server, which allows you to accept Bitcoin as payment if you're uh, a business of any kind, uh, or even as donations in a truly trustless censorship resistant way. Let's jump in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur, Bitcoin pleb, an all around raging capitalist. And I'm very excited to do this video today. Uh, BTC Pay Server is honestly one of the most impressive open source software platforms um, period, full stop. Like it doesn't even matter the domain you're talking about. It really, really is a phenomenal set of tools. And so really, if you're a business of any kind, right, this could be, you know, a, a proper LLC. This could be you just on your own doing your own kind of side hustles. Um, this could be anything in between. This could be accepting donations. For all of those use cases, you may wish to uh, provide the option to accept payment in Bitcoin. And indeed, if you're an advocate of Bitcoin, there are few things as powerful as contributing to making Bitcoin a circular economy, one in which we can use Bitcoin uh, as payment for goods and services. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through uh, a tutorial of BTC Pay Server. You are not gonna wanna miss a thing. Welcome back for those returning to the channel, my friends. It is great to have you. And for those new to the channel, I welcome you as well. I know about 80% of you watching right this moment are not currently subscribed. And so if you like this type of content, I invite you to consider subscribing and join us in our growing merry gang in cyberspace. I cover all manner of Bitcoin related content, including tutorials like this, news, analysis. You want it, I cover it. That is the name of the game. But without further ado, I wanna first start off with just some context on BTC Pay Server, and then we'll get into the meat of things. So I think the motivation behind BTC Pay Server is pretty clear. You know, again, if you're any type of business that could be a proper LLC or corporation, or even just you yourself in a side hustle, um, you know, uh, consulting gig, whatever you do, and you want to accept Bitcoin as payment or even donations for a cause, BTC Pay Server is a phenomenal platform to do that. And in terms of how BTC Pay Server got started, uh, this is just one of the most legendary tweets ever tweeted by any human ever. Uh, and it is from Nicholas Dorier, who is uh, one of the main contributors to BTC Pay Server. This is not a company, it's an open source uh, you know, software project. But uh, this is Nicholas responding to BitPay. And so this was back in the block size wars. So BitPay, uh, I'm not gonna you know, go through their, their full kind of announcement here, but they were basically trying to very deceptively push on their users uh, what would become a hard fork of Bitcoin. And so they're kind of trying, they, they were proponents of the uh, increase in block size. And so they, they're kind of casually announcing, hey, just sort of upgrade, you know, to your, your client software and, uh, and you know, things will be good. And so there's a ton of people calling them out, even putting the merits of the block size increase to the side, you're being very deceptive, you're lying to your users, uh, you know, people are going to receive a forked version of Bitcoin. And so Nicholas basically says, I will make you obsolete. And guess what? He has done just that along with uh, all the other sort of contributors of the project. So great ethos, and that is imbued throughout what you see with this platform. Uh, it is truly, truly about sovereignty. You control your keys at all times. You know, the whole point is to kind of cut out middlemen, cut out processing fees if you're a business of any kind. Uh, this could be brick and mortar or digital as we as we will discuss. Now, what do you need to get started? You need the BTC Pay Server software and you need to uh, essentially decide on a deployment method. Now, this can be a wide range of things. Um, today, I'm going to take you through BTC Pay Server 
the app, which is embedded within Umbral. So I'm going to take you through running it, you know, on my own uh, sort of node. So, you know, you can run this on a Raspberry Pi, uh, no problem. Uh, and something like Umbral makes it really nice to integrate BTC Pay Server as an app directly into your Umbral interface. But if you're running a node other than Umbral, you know, you can pretty easily deploy BTC Pay Server on your hardware, kind of regardless of what you're using. There are also a lot of other options as well. Uh, you can essentially, you know, pay someone to uh, host this for you. Uh, there are there's something like Luna Node, uh, which is a one click install. I have the breakdown of cost here. It's like 10 bucks a month. Um, and so there's a lot of different options. They have one click options for Azure. If you're, you know, a, a bigger sort of business and you want to spin up a server, you know, on something like uh, Azure or Google Cloud. So that's kind of step one. And again, it ranges from very easy uh, to where you're having someone else do it to uh, harder where you're kind of doing it yourself and definitely weigh up the pros and cons in terms of sovereignty, right? Obviously, if you're relying on anyone else, that is a potential uh, risk factor, but could be the appropriate move for a lot of folks. So with that intro in context and your deployment method chosen, let's jump into the actual tutorial. BTCPayServer.org is the homepage. Uh, I want to point out their docs are absolutely fantastic. Um, so you can, you know, have a lot of different resources at your disposal here. There's a user guide for all the kind of features. And then there's a deployment guide. So uh, what I was just referencing a moment ago, where you can look at some of the different options uh, for deployment. Again, here's the kind of Luna node option, uh, third party hosting and more. But in our case, we're going to pop back over to Umbral. And so I'm in my Umbral node, and I'm going to go to the App Store. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Umbral, I've done a whole video on uh, building a node from scratch and uh, flashing Umbral onto the device. So I would encourage you to check that out if you are at all interested in um, spinning one of these up. It's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy. It's a great, great little project. It'll help you really understand uh, you know, Bitcoin a lot more. And I've done also a video on other reasons that you would want to run your own node. Uh, but let's go ahead and proceed. So we're in the App Store. Uh, I love this about Umbral. You've got all sorts of tools that you can sort of embed and add. Uh, and we are going to scroll down and go to BTC Pay Server. Uh, and as you can see, accept Bitcoin payments with zero fees and no third party. Uh, Lightning is supported. I mean, this thing really is a absolute beast. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. All right, so the first step is to create an account. So I just need to have an email and password. Uh, this, this is important for, you know, if you're like an actual business, right? Uh, if you're just playing around, you know, you can put, put whatever in, uh, but I will create this and be right back. All right. So we've created our account and this is what you will see. Uh, you'll see server settings if you are running this on your own node or if you're, you know, if you are running this on uh, a server that you're sort of controlling. Um, what's really cool about uh, BTC Pay Server is you can run a server and allow others that you know uh, to use your server to accept payments for their businesses. Um, so if you have, you know, some friends running side hustles, like you could run a server uh, on their behalf. And in their case, they would not see server settings, but they would see everything else. Uh, you've got stores. So we'll talk about each of these concepts, apps, wallets, invoices, and payment requests. Uh, let's just quickly take a look at each of these. So server settings, I will hop in here. Uh, and you'll see, you know, you can add uh, th things like users to the server. So this is why that's important. Uh, you've got uh, SMTP server settings. So for emails, uh, this can be again important for uh, for businesses. Uh, policies, you know, you can uh, configure kind of user settings as you're as you're running the server. Um, services, uh, the theme. Obviously, we're gonna toggle this to dark mode here. Let's go ahead and save that. Nice. We've got our dark theme going. Uh, logs, give, uh, and then you ha you can configure kind of file storage, and then there's uh, plugins as well. 
Uh, you can see Shopify, which is really cool. I didn't realize they had that. But let's get to like the real kind of meat of things. So let's pop over to stores and we'll go ahead and create a new store. And I'm just gonna call it, you know, test store uh, for our demo purposes here. We'll say create. And we have successfully created the store. So now that that's created, we also wanna set up a wallet so that we can actually receive payments. And so we'll hit this uh, setup button. We can also access that in the wallets tab as we'll show in just a moment. Uh, but let's go ahead and set this up. And so you have a couple different options. You can connect an existing uh, wallet or you can create a brand new wallet to use. I would generally recommend if you're actually doing this to connect an existing hardware wallet. That makes it so that the keys required to spend funds out of your you know, BTC pay store uh, are controlled on that hardware wallet. Um, so again, that would be my recommendation if you're actually doing this. For purposes of the demo, I'm just gonna uh, create a new wallet here. Uh, and I will create the hot wallet and you can see there's some helpful guidance here. You know, spending the funds you received is convenient, but to minimize the risk of theft, regularly withdraw funds to a different wallet. So I'll go ahead and choose this option. Uh, it gives you the address type. So we'll do native SegWit as a best practice. Uh, they've even integrated PayJoin into this, which is nuts. So PayJoin is an impl uh, implementation that allows users to uh, basically join forces into a coin join, uh, which increases the privacy of different transactions. So totally nuts that they've uh, you know integrated even that into this. So you can see that um, ethos coming through in choices like that. Um, there's some advanced settings as well. So you can put an optional uh, BIP39 passphrase etc. So we'll go ahead and leave these uh, parameters and hit continue. And we'll go ahead and write down our recovery phrase and be right back. All right, so we've written it down. Um, and it also importantly says in the case of the hot wallet, the recovery phrase will also be stored on the server. Uh, so be advised of that. And there we go. So we've got the XPUB associated with the wallet that we've just created. Uh, and we can also enable lightning payments, which is very, very cool. So let's go ahead and set this up as well. And then it gives you uh, two options. You can use the internal node, uh, the basically the BTC uh, server internal node for, um, for this store or you can use a custom node where you can see they support uh, the main kind of lightning implementations, C Lightning, Eclair, LND as well. Uh, and you kind of get different uh, instructions accordingly. We're gonna go ahead and use uh, the internal node. All right, um, we can put some other general information if we have a store website uh, and there's a whole host of different payment uh, settings here. Allowing anyone to create an invoice allows for things like uh, the payment of partial uh, partial invoices. So let's say that you know you have you're a business and there's a uh, there's an invoice owed to you. Um, allowing someone to create an invoice would allow them to pay a partial amount of that, which is a nice feature. It also gives you options on how you want to deal with the network fee um, in the case of on-chain transactions. And so, you know, only if the customer makes more than one payment for the invoice uh, on every payment uh, or, you know, never add the network fee and, and you, would be, you would be eating that. You can specify the length of time. This is important uh, that an invoice would expire, length of time by which you would want to make a payment invalid uh, and, you know, how many confirmations do you require to consider the invoice fully paid and confirmed. So if we scroll back up, um, there's also some other options and settings along the left. Uh, so for rates, you can specify where you want to pull in exchange rate information from. Um, so it's currently set to CoinGecko, uh, but you can you know choose from a whole slew of different sources. Uh, you can add a spread on the exchange rate if you want to protect somewhat against uh, exchange rate fluctuations. So, uh, and then you've got you know default currency pairs, etc. In terms of the checkout experience, you can uh, you can specify whether on-chain payments is the default. Uh, they can, of course, change it to Lightning if you have that uh, configured, which we just did. 
Um, or if you want to do you know, off-chain, you can make that the default. You can also configure some rules. So maybe there's a certain amount uh, in US dollar terms below which it just doesn't make that much sense to do an on-chain payment, right? You know, For a very, very small transaction, maybe you basically want to only enable off-chain transactions. So that's another nice feature for the kind of end uh, consumer on the other side of the payment. Uh, a refund email can be important if there's a, uh, it, depending on the nature of your business, depending on the nature of the product. Um, some other you know, kind of settings here. You've got some different lightning settings. Uh, you could choose to display the uh, payment amounts in Satoshis, which is you know, typically gonna be a more helpful denomination with lower, uh, kind of smaller uh, payments. Uh, and some more advanced features we won't discuss in depth here. This is where you can also customize the appearance of what the pop-up will sort of look like. So you can uh, put a custom logo on it. If you know if you have your biz business's logo, you can do a custom CSS style sheet. Uh, so very, very cool stuff. We'll just uh, do the kind of dark theme that comes, uh, comes kind of default. Let's save. Uh, the pay button is massively useful, so this we definitely uh, will go and enable. And so this pay this pay button is super useful, particularly if you have like maybe a fixed price for a certain offering, or if there's a kind of fixed donation amount that you want to put on a on a site somewhere. But suffice it to say, you can optionally put a a price, you know, in USD. Uh, you can customize what the button actually looks like. Um, so you'll see that the image file is being stored locally, uh, but we could you know, upload an alternative if we wish to, uh, to use something different than what you can see here. Uh, you can toggle this to be custom amount in a situation where you know, it's not a fixed uh, single amount. So this is great. This allows for varying levels of you know, uh, payment. Do a min and max if you wish. You have a few parameters that uh, kind of allow you to dictate what happens uh, after the purchase. So there could be email notifications. Um, you know, all, all this is, is optional as you can see. Uh, some advanced options. Uh, but basically you get the code. Like here is the HTML uh, and CSS code that you can uh, plop into your website and that's your button. Uh, so really, really cool stuff. Um, you know, if you had a, uh, if you had a, a website, you just copy the code and you can embed the payment button, um, which is going to allow individuals visiting your site to pay with BTC uh, pay server. So very cool there. Uh, integrations. This is really important. So there is a Shopify integration, which is huge. Uh, Shopify, very, very popular e-commerce, um, you know, platform that allows you to spin up a storefront, uh, you know, include different products, etc. cetera. Uh, so you could set that up if you've got um, Shopify, but there's other integrations as well. So WooCommerce is another uh, Magento is another uh, popular one. So if you have an e-commerce uh, site, these are some of the options that you would have to integrate um, and you would basically you know, click set up and follow the, the instructions accordingly. Um, and there's also webhooks. So pretty, pretty action packed stuff there. Uh, but again, the, the, the main takeaways are you, you wanna first create a store, you wanna configure your uh, wallets. So for every store, there will be a wallet. Uh, and what's really nice is BTC Pay Server cycles through receive addresses connected to your XPUB. Um, so there's no kind of static one, you know, single address that's being used for all these payments, which is very nice for privacy. Um, and then, you know, you have a whole host of uh, options, pay button, uh, if you wanna just do a standalone pay button on your site, uh, et cetera. But if we wanna really kind of set this up as more of like a, a proper kind of POS or point of sale, we will go over to apps. And so we'll create a new app. You can see that it requires the connection to a store. So we'll connect it to the store we just created. And you'll see that there are two different app types. There's point of sale and then crowdfund, which I mean literally lets you create a little like crowdfund page uh, that people can come and uh, donate to. So very, very cool stuff. Let's select the point of sale for now uh, and we'll give it a name. So test POS and we'll hit create. All right, so we've created the point of sale. I, I love they kind of fill this out. Uh, it makes my life very easy from 
a demo standpoint, uh, you know, obviously you would put something different, uh, but they have this sort of tea shop almost as a, as a demo of what this looks like. So you'll see there's different um, products that you can add. So you can add, you know, uh, whatever it is, you know, Rager Major Consulting, right? Like specify your price, um, upload an, uh, an image, uh, which we pointed out in the earlier um, server settings, have a description and so on and so forth. You've got some appearance settings. Um, you know, you could uh, potentially enable discounts. You could enable uh, tips, which is very nice. And you have a ton of different options. You can embed it via an iframe uh, with this bit of, uh, of code, which is very, very cool. You can embed a payment button linking to the different POS items. So all of this is delivered in a way in which you can kind of pluck the relevant code and embed it. Um, or you, know, you can even view the kind of web-based uh, app if we launch it here. So like, here's our tea shop, right? Uh, this is what it could look like, you know, maybe on a, on an iPad in your store or, or whatever. Um, and so for example, if I wanted to buy some, you know, black tea, I'd hit buy for a dollar. Uh, and, and here we go. Like this is what I would see. And so maybe for a dollar, I actually want to pay, uh, via the lightning network. Uh, it will give me this lightning invoice. And I'm just opening on my phone uh, Blue Wallet, which is a nice mobile wallet that uh, supports both uh, regular Bitcoin and Lightning. And I'm just opening my Lightning Wallet and I'm going to uh, scan the QR code here. Um, and so I'm sending what is essentially 25.50 sats. It's to a dollar and I'll hit pay, Ah, of course. So this, this actually won't work because I have not uh, set up my lightning channels for my node. Uh, that's that's going to be a video I do in the very near future. I've done uh, a couple videos where I've talked about that at a high level. Uh, so let's let's sort of save that for another day. Um, but let's let's go to the Bitcoin. Uh, we'll just do an on-chain transaction, even though it's a little bit silly size. And again, I'll just do the same sort of thing here. And there you go. So the invoice has been paid. So that's right. That's I mean, we just legit did a, uh, a transaction there. So very cool stuff. I'll return to the test store. We can exit out of this. So again, I think in a lot of cases, most folks, per particularly for e-commerce, again, just to recap, like your options are Probably, you're probably going to want to use one of the integrations that we were talking through, whether it's uh, Shopify, WooCommerce, etc. Uh, but if you're using, if you're not using one of those uh, providers, and you're just kind of, uh, you've got your own e-commerce store, um, you would probably be using one of these kind of custom embed uh, options. And then if you're uh, a brick and mortar store, you would be um, potentially using, you know, the web-based app that we were just. Uh, looking at so you know the customer could bring the product up uh, and you know they basically click the appropriate item and pay for it there on the spot uh, if we pop over to wallets uh, we'll see that we've got our um, our Bitcoin wallet with the inbound uh, payment that we just uh, that we just received so I can manage this wallet uh, I can see the transaction information corresponding to any payments that have been received to this wallet uh, and this is also where I would come to send funds out of this wallet, right? I would go to the send uh, option and you'll see that it is very much a familiar interface for sending funds out uh, of this wallet. Again, this would be a situation in which maybe you set up a hot wallet for your uh, BTC pay server store uh, and you know you want to withdraw that to a hardware wallet. Although again, I would recommend if you're actually doing this, just you know, do it with a hardware wallet uh, from the outset when we were going through that workflow. Uh, you can also receive fu additional funds um, into this wallet. You can do partially signed Bitcoin transactions, which is really, really cool. Uh, and there's some other settings here as well. Next, you've got invoices. So this gives all the kind of context on different payments. Obviously, this is very simple because it's just the one payment we just did. Uh, but this is really nice. I mean, from an accounting standpoint, right? Like if you're doing this properly, you know, for a business, obviously accounting is, is really important. 
Uh, and so in the invoices tab is where you can get all that uh, gory detail for both on-chain and lightning payments. Um, and you can you know, filter by different criteria. You can export this into a CSV, uh, which is super useful. Lastly are payment requests. Uh, so these are great. These are basically requests that you don't have an expiration date. Uh, you can even see I just got a notification, presumably that, um, yeah, that my invoice was confirmed. So I've got the first confirmation and so I get a helpful little notification. Love to see it. Uh, but yeah, payment requests are essentially an invoice that you can create that doesn't have uh, an expiration date um, or, or that doesn't have to have an expiration date. Of course, you can specify one if you wish, but this allows, like, let's let's say that you're uh, I don't know, a contractor of some kind. And so this is a, a maybe a bigger job that like someone's not going to pay necessarily on the spot or within the next 15 minutes or hour or whatever it is, you can create a payment request um, that could have an expiration date or doesn't have to. You can send that to someone in order to pay, which is a very nice option. Uh, this allow payee to create invoices in their own denomination is an option that again, lets them pay partial amounts uh, of that broader invoice, depending on, again, the nature of what it is that you're doing. Maybe just real quick before we close things out, uh, let's create, instead of the uh, point of sale, we can do the crowdfund. So test crowdfund, we can create that, port my cause, you know, whatever the tagline is, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you can set target amounts, BTC, and we want to, you know, raise one Bitcoin. <laughs> Again, I'm just making this up. Start date and end date. Uh, there could be perks that you add, right? Uh, depending on the nature of, of what you're doing. A whole host of different uh, options and parameters here. Uh, there we go. And so I put I put in the description, uh, It was that was a required parameter. I just wanted to quickly view uh, what it actually looks like. And so again, there you go. There's my, you know, within two seconds, uh, you know, crowdfunding uh, page, support my cause. Again, you know, it looks, looks pretty heinous because I didn't spend any time uh, configuring it, uh, but really cool stuff. And again, someone wants to contribute, uh, you know, you can donate uh, a certain amount. So very, very, very powerful stuff. Again, I really scratched the surface today, but my goal was to at least introduce you to this. I'll likely do future videos where I go deeper into uh, some of the functionality, uh, but let's go ahead and close this video out. All right, my friends, there you have it. As I alluded to at the outset, BTC Pay Server is truly a beast, really impressive suite of tools. Uh, that allows you to do a lot of things, right? You can accept Bitcoin as payment, donations. Uh, so I really think this deserves a lot more love uh, than, it, than it gets. Um, so spread the word, share this with a friend or a colleague or anyone who you think this could be helpful for. Uh, we need more kind of open source software, especially as it relates to Bitcoin payments, right? I'm curious to hear what you think. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments down below. I hope you found this valuable and useful. If you did, you already know what to do. Smash that like button. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave this video here. As always, every sat counts. And until next time, I'll see you then.